stimulant for their minds. Uh, let's say, let's not mention any kind of Spanish TV program. But, but it was not good, right? So we identified that they have a lot of free time, but unfortunately they lack the resources to, to get out of the nursing home and, and live experiences that are so common for us, right? Such like uh, just visiting a family member or taking a walk around hometown, traveling, these kind of experiences are not possible for them. And professionals and family members are really committed to, to help them, but unfortunately they lack the resources to do so as best as they can, right? So we thought, what can we do to help them? Uh, and this is why we created... Yes. And this is why we created uh, Oroid, right? Which is a therapeutic... Bus Viverra nos llevó la, la posibilidad de la situación de la realidad virtual para personas mayores. Era un proyecto que estaba iniciándose por una pequeña startup de, de Donosti. Trabajamos con ellos para que se pudieran hacer vídeos adaptados a, a nuestros residentes y desde ese momento eh, ha ido creciendo la experiencia. La terapia de realidad virtual la utilizamos a través de unas gafas eh, mediante diferentes vídeos con diferentes temáticas. Los beneficios que estamos eh, observando con esta terapia son que optimiza el mantenimiento de las capacidades cognitivas, la atención, la memoria. La... Here you can see one experience that we have in, in a nursing home that is very close to here in San Sebastián. Um, was uh, our first pilot, like three or four years ago, um, was a very good experience for us. And the feedback of the users was really nice. And this, uh, there is uh, when we start with the project. Uh, our first uh, solution was already welding, but we start seeing that uh, there was more opportunities for the classes inside the nursing homes and also for the professionals that are working inside the nursing homes, like uh, uh, psychology profiles or, or another, another kind of uh, professionals. Then we start with Wolvin. Wolvin is a, a VR app where you can find 360 videos content, especially designed for elderly people that you can find there is like visiting place, different places, cities around the world, uh, museums, also like relaxing experiences. Uh, nowadays we have like more than 200. The 94.5% of them are uh, done by, by us. We have one guy that is like uh, visiting and traveling around the world, filming these kind of experiences. And and the, 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 it's a well-being app, but uh, we start seeing that we have more opportunity, a part of the well-being, to do things with this kind of content. That's why we hire uh, one neuropsychology inside our company, that is Adriana. And Adriana start doing some intervention guides uh, related with the content that uh, uh, you can see. And then, uh, also, our aim was to, to create, a, to give to the professionals that are uh, working in the, in the nursing home, like all the work, pre, all the pre-work done from our side to do the application of the, of the app more easy for them. Because sometimes, as you know, they are like very busy in their daily life and they don't have uh, too much time to, to start thinking or in innovating if they work in their work and we start like uh, thinking how can we do their work like more easier and that's why we start to use these intervention guides that become our well-being platform also in a cognitive stimulation app. It is also important to know that right now one of the limitations we have at the moment of, of providing stimulus to our users is that uh, right now we're mainly using auditory stimulus and visual stimulus, right? But a potential that uh, this tactility project can provide to our solution is how we can make this immersion even deeper, right? And especially more stimulant for the elderly. So for instance, if you're seeing a farm right now, uh, we can see the farm, we can hear the sheep and the cows, but we cannot touch them. 
So this has a huge potential in the field of both the well-being and the cognitive stimulation because it provides an additional stimulus that is really beneficial for the elderly. So that's why uh, nowadays uh, dog-based therapies, canine therapies are being so popular and it's because it is providing us with something else than just uh, a stimulus to, to our eyes, a visual or an auditory stimulus. I mean, thanks to tactile technologies, we can take this further and have a bigger impact in both well-being and the cognitive stimulation. Yeah, this is a study which was done by the Mattia Foundation and, and we saw that it, this tool helped to generate emotional well-being among the elderly population. So from one side, uh, it helped to calm them before episodes of nervousness or anxiety. And from the other side, it helped to activate them where they were kind of feeling absent, right? This study was done with people with, with advanced stages of dementia. So it was a customer profile with which we, we were quite afraid of using the technology. We were very afraid yeah. to, to do it because we, we didn't very sure what is going to happen, no? because sometimes people that are like us, okay, in a good cognitive way, uh, we are able to do to give feedback. But people that have a advanced dementia is more difficult. And also was were the target of people that we want to go because it's the one of the more utilities that they can use. And was the feedback was very good. And that's why uh, we start applying it also for this kind of profiles. Um, the second app is already cognitive. Well, the, we start seeing that the, the technology has more potential to use inside the, the nursing homes and also in, in homes of the users. And we uh, start speaking up with uh, psychological profiles and we see that uh, we can start like doing um, daily, uh, daily situations we can we can train it in a safety way also in in the in the glasses that's why we we start thinking okay now they are training uh, these these cognitive functions like attention memory brain a lot of cognitive functions but with uh, i don't know an app in, a, in an ipad or whatever or, or something more rudimental and we start saying okay let's develop something that uh, can also give them the opportunity to train these kind of things that they are going to face in their day by day, like going to the supermarket, uh, take uh, money from the bank, uh, I don't know, dress up, or all yeah. these kind of things that is very common for us, but for them is like a, a challenge in their daily daily life. Yeah, Tra traditional community simulation has uh, a big limitation and it's that okay, people might improve doing this kind of uh, pen or pencil based exercises, but then later on that has a really limited transfer to, to daily life, right? So it's not the same to do this activity of matching the eagle with the eagle and the cow with the cow or simulating that we're shopping in a market, right? So thanks to VR here, uh, we can have a bigger transfer to, to the daily life. So that's the main advantage uh, our customers have identified in virtual reality as opposed to uh, normal interventions or traditional cognitive stimulation interventions. And also, uh, well, we see that for the professionals it was difficult to understand our tool and the levels of, of uh, inside the activities of our tool. And we develop a kind of algorithm that uh, after a test with a user, we are able to to see in which level of the of one of the activities are. Yeah, so yeah, automatically, uh, as long as the user does an initial test, and auto automatically uh, the system assigns them a certain level based on their uh, of their cognitive uh, decline stage, uh, stage of dementia, etc. We done a uh, small research on this in funded by Adinberry, which is a, a local elderly care or yeah, silver economy institution, and also with the group Kasser. And we saw that there were significant improvements, especially in the field of vocabulary and language, which is something we were expecting in the beginning because uh, we got 
a lot of positive feedback from professionals uh, dealing with people with, with nausea and, and, and aphasia. So, uh, I mean, it was an interesting result and we are planning to do uh, further studies uh, on this side. So, I know there's a lot of people coming from universities here, so we're really open to do any kind of collaborations or research with you as well. So, I think we are almost over time, almost 15 minutes. So, perhaps we will give you the introduction yeah. of the last uh, very quickly way. We synchronize some adapted pedals with the glasses and uh, the users can are able uh, to, to be cycling uh, inside the VR glasses. Then. Yeah, as long as the users are pedaling, they are moving within a virtual environment. So thanks to this, we can train both uh, upper and lower limbs. So we get the same benefits we get uh, by pedaling, but we have uh, an additional stimulus which is provided by VR and which can lead to dual therapies. So uh, dual therapy means that um, normally when, when we're doing daily life activities, we're not just working one cognitive function at the same time because we're coordinating the movement. So uh, we're looking to outside stimulus. Maybe a car comes and we need to stop. So thanks to this exercise, we can directly uh, simulate those situations with the elderly. So yeah. they're pedaling, but they're getting another stimulus based on the virtual reality experience. Yeah, we, we saw that this stimulation was very important for them because uh, in our case, we are a generation that we are used to do, go to the gym and to do this kind of exercise, but in uh, older generations, their whole gym was the, their work. No, then they need this kind of a stimul, a stimulation to to do to do the exercise. Yeah, I think we are over time, so we will shut up and <laughs> let you ask <laughs> questions. You don't need to shut up. <laughs> we can take some questions. So thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. A very nice uh, use case for virtual reality. I think we also have a group on, on psychology, so probably maybe yes. there is some, something from yes. you. From yes, congratulations for your Thank work you. and for your visit. We are also working on this field. We have post uh, an app that I don't know is Padlet that has quite similar objectives, but not for the uh, fitness, but for promoting well being and okay. cognitive training in, uh, in elderly people. And well, I, I like very much your solution. I, I was thinking about how to implement, especially the, the welding application, because I think that the cognitive, uh, the cognitive part is usually more embedded in a, a cognitive uh, therapies or programs in order to promote some specific areas. But in the case of, of welding, that could be more uh, broad uh, user case, no? because it, it's not only for people who have problems or yeah. some delay in cognitive function, but also for general elderly people. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you if you have planned or, or you have in mind to to, to embed it, the welding app also in a more systematic intervention or program or something like that in order to, to promote, no, not only to, uh, I think that your like, data say that while the users are uh, visualizing the, the environments, they feel happy, they feel good, but how to translate that into the daily, uh, into the daily life. No? That's that's one of the, of the questions. And another is, uh, I think that you have talked about social, social aspect of the, also in that case. No, but I don't know if, if you also uh, have planned or something like that to include other people's sharing their experiences. Yeah, with the, yeah. Yeah, let, let's replay both questions. Yeah, for, for the first one, uh, we have some intervention guides which have been designed by our colleague Adriana. So these intervention guides are related to each content, right? So some intervention guides might be focused on just socializing experience and fostering up this kind of uh, social relationships between the different users. And some others uh, might be also focused in, in working in reminiscence, based training, visual memory, uh, verbal memory and attention. So that's how we match this kind of entertainment based experiences because for sure they have this kind of entertainment background, but how we we kind of how we prepare it to be used uh, by therapists, right? And for the second question, uh, we have developed a system 
which is compatible with Android devices and also can be controlled from the computer. So we can externally synchronize and control multiple Googles at the same time. So thanks to this, we can take uh, we, we can make all the users to live the same experience at the same time. So this additionally, this fosters up this kind of relationships. And I mean, they share experience, for example, uh, one week they have visits to Italy, right? So they all live the same experiences and they speak about them. Uh, they get their relationships tighter because they share perso personal experiences. They might have lived in those locations, etc. I don't know if I replied to questions. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> okay, yes, there is. First of all, just to congratulation. Thank you. Thank you all the work. It's very good. So I'll thank you. Thank you. Yes. I just have a quick question. Um, one common complaint of people uh, regarding virtual reality and the use of health mobile devices is that people get dizzy after using them. Mm -hmm. okay. So I just wanted to ask if this sounds common in the time of this Was this a problem? Uh, this is a really good question. Um, and I mean, this in essence, we have identified that it's caused when the contents have not have not been properly created, right? For instance, if I take a 360 camera and I just walk and I film that video, if I, even if I stabilize it properly, it's very likely that people would get uh, dizzy or we get this kind of motion sickness because of it, right? Because I mean, the brain is seeing that okay, the eyes interpret that we're moving, but our legs are not moving. So plenty of people might get this kind of motion sickness from this kind of experience. So when we try to avoid this kind of scenes, and if we introduce movement within the scenes, we introduce justified movement, like riding a bike, a, a chariot, a car. And also we avoid this kind of ex we avoid these kind of experiences like uh, roller coasters and these kind of things. That's for sure. And then we have seen as well that motion sickness is most more common between professionals than between the elderly. But the reason, I mean, the, we think that the reason is the next one, is that when the professionals put on the Google for the first time, they're kind of moving the head constantly, turning around. So we believe that this motion sickness initially is caused because they're moving themselves too much with the Googles. We have identified that when we put the Googles to the elderly people, they are quite calm at the moment of using it. So they're not as excited as the professional. So they're not moving so much. So we haven't got so many cases of this news for sure. We all, you always find some case which might uh, experience some motion sickness, but it's not so common. Uh, yes, you know. in, this, in the same line of the question, can you think about those further in terms of hardware and for example, we use some mixed reality and technology. About that, like our jobs or how you mix our free or give you the opportunity to keep all the people powerful or the VR, but you can uh, look at your body and, and, and feel better because of this. So I don't know how you think about that. Yeah, we we have think about that, but it's also true that if the reality of the nursing homes and their the people that are inside maybe are not able yet to to use all the capacity that the technology has but in the houses yes then we are thinking on to develop new products that maybe for people that don't have the that level of dementia can use but uh, with things like uh, as you see say missing reality and also hand tracking and these kind of things but uh, we are one step earlier. Yeah. It, it is really interesting. I, I, I did do, uh, if you have the opportunity to test it, uh, you will see that inside there is something like a uh, eye tracker that can to focus uh, plan that is more adaptable to our physiological behavior. Uh, so it's something that is really more comfortable in, in terms of time, and also because you're less tired. And, Effects of the uh, if you want, I would be it would be a pleasure to go back to you both. Sure, really, absolutely. Yeah, it would be really interesting. <laughs> absolutely, yes, thank you. Okay, thanks.